Hey there, welcome back to another video in the Nuclei Foundation series. In this video, we're going to be checking out Nuclei Extractors. So these little guys are actually a game changer when it comes to extracting and organizing data from responses. So let's dive right in. We'll start by understanding what extractors are and then on to checking out different types of extractors with some examples. Then we'll explore dynamic extractors. And then finally, we'll end the video by checking out a cool new feature called request and response variables. So as usual, this video is timestamped. You can jump to any section you want. Feel free to skip rewatch sections as you like and all the mentioned links will be down in the description. So. What are extractors? Extractors lets us extract and display results of a match. So when we run a scan, we can match for certain things and also extract that information and output it to a screen. Additionally, we can also extract these bits of information from the response and then store them in a variable so that we can use them later, like in another request. So before we jump into wild examples, let's actually talk about or go through quickly different types of nuclei extractors. These are pretty simple and straightforward. There are mainly five types. They are regular expressions, key value pairs, JSON, XPath, and then finally DSL, which is the domain specific language. So each has its own special use case depending on what kind of data we're dealing with. So we'll go ahead and quickly check out a bunch of examples that showcases these different features. Okay, so no more waiting, let's get to our first example. So extracting from an HTTP response using both the regular expression and the key value extractor. So picture this, you've got this huge body of HTTP response and then you need to pull out a specific pattern and also grab a specific HTTP header. So that's where our buddies regular expression and key value extractors come into play. Suppose we have this HTTP response and we want to extract AWS access key pattern and also the content type header value. So this is probably how the body looks like and there is our key that we want to extract. The AWS access key pattern can be extracted using the regex or the regular expression extractor and the content type header value can be obtained using the key value extractor. So this is how the YAML configuration looks like. Here, the regular expression or the regex uh, extractor will hunt down the specific AWS access key in the response. At the same time, the key value extractor will grab the content type header from the response body. And do note that the key value extractor has content type content underscore type instead of content dash type. And this is because the extractors do not accept dashes in the input. So it's, you know, replaced or substituted with underscores. So keep that in mind. All right, now let's actually check out another example. Let's imagine uh, another scenario you're dealing with, let's say JSON responses, and you need to extract a particular object's value. That's where JSON extractors come into play. Assume this is the JSON body that we're dealing with. So we have the users, which is an array of objects, and each one of them have the ID, name, and an email. So we want to extract the ID of each user in the user's object array, right? So the YAML configuration looks like this. So in this setup, the JSON extractor would traverse through each one of those objects in the user's array and extract the ID field. So this is using a JQ-like syntax. So this syntax roughly translates to, uh, for each object in the user's array, extract the ID field. So in our case, the extractor would return one, two, three, and four, five, six. So those are the IDs that we get from the user's array of objects. All right, onto the last scenario. You've got this HTTP response, I mean HTML response, and you wanna extract the elements attribute using the XPath and also you want to evaluate a DSL expression. That's where XPath and DSL extractors would be useful. So in our HTML response, let's assume we have a structure that looks like this. And in our case, we want to extract the 
a href attribute of a link element and the xpath to that element would look something like this, the HTML, body, div, and a tag. And we also want to use the DSL extractor to evaluate the length of the body. So this is how the configuration looks like. As you can see, we have both the XPath and the DSL uh, extractors, and we're pulling the href attribute from the HTML response like so, and also the DSL extractor, which is evaluating the body's length. Pretty cool. All right, now let's actually take a minute to chat about dynamic extractors. So these guys are like undercover agents uh, of the extractor world. So they capture dynamic values on the fly during a multi-request template. So what this means is that you can, you can extract different parts of the response into a variable so that you can actually use them later on. So these can be useful for things like tracking CSR of tokens or session headers as they change while you make requests. Let's check out dynamic extractors in action. Suppose you're dealing with this HTTP response and you want to extract a dynamic value like a token. So you might actually use regular expression to capture this and then pretty much store it in like a variable. So in, in our example, there's the token that we want to extract so that we can use it in another request that we want to send later. So here's the YAML configuration for this dynamic extractor. So it looks something like this. So in this example, the extractor is named token, which captures a regular expression based pattern from the body of the response and then store it in the variable token. The internal true setting is actually used to store the extracted value as a dynamic variable internally. And this value can then be used in like a subsequent request, like I mentioned. Also, it prevents the extracted value from being printed anywhere in the terminal. Pretty cool feature, pretty handy feature if you're especially dealing with a lot of different uh, stages of requests. Pretty cool, pretty cool. So now let's check out request and response variables. So these are pre-populated variables that hold information about the request and the response that was sent and received during the scan. So these variables can then be used within a matcher or even an extractor. So this is a simple example running nuclei with debug flags. It will list out all the variables that are part of the debug output uh, because I've specified the dash SVD option that dumps all the variables. So as you can see in the list, there are request and response variables that can be used within a matcher or an extractor. So let's actually go ahead and write a simple extractor that extracts one of these variables using the domain specific language. It's simple as using the variable within an extractor like so. And uh, here where I'm using actually the status code and the e tag variables, but you can go ahead and use any of those variables within your template. Pretty cool. So if we run that, we get the output status code and the e tag. Pretty cool. So, all right, folks, that's a wrap for today. Uh, we talked about some cool types of nuclear extractors and how they can be used in practical scenarios. These tools save a lot of time and make your data extraction a lot easier. So give them a try. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.